Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Really Big Plant. So for today's video, we are gonna be doing some plant chores in my new house. I've recovered from COVID and I am ready to finally kick back into action. So it's been a little over two weeks since I moved in and I'm ashamed to say that I still have a lot of plants that need to be unpacked. I've taken most of the plants out, but there's some boxes full of plants that I know could probably handle the torment. Um, some vining plants, pothos, scandapsis, that I still have like in front of the window in their box trays. And I have a lot of plants that I need to propagate actually. So there were some panic decisions I made as I was packing up plants where I decided to chop up a lot of my long vining plants. And um, it has been over two weeks now and those vines have just been sitting there. So I need to propagate those vines and I had a little bit of a pest scare. I thought I saw some aphids on some of my plants, but that turned out to be something else. So we're gonna talk about that too. I've got a couple of zones in my house now. Well, it feels so weird to say house, not apartment. Um, I've got a couple of zones in my house that are a disaster plant zone right now. So my dining room over there has the majority of the plants and they are needing some help. Um, and then I've got a little zone over here with some plants that I need to do some stuff with. And then I've got a little propagation area. And then I also have This room here, which um, is a guest room with a pull-down Murphy bed right there, which is really nice. And my husband and I have been sleeping in this room um, until yesterday when our mattress finally arrived. So this room has been a bit of a plant disaster. You can see I've got some sad plants in here. This room gets some of the best light in the house. I still have some plants in these drawers that I need to take out and yeah, I want to start like situating plants in their spots now. I've got, look, I put a big monstera back over there. So I'm really, really excited about that. And we've got so much space right now um, because we haven't like filled out our kitchen or haven't finished unpacking things. So my husband surprised me by unpacking all of the plant pots and putting them into this cabinet. Look at how amazing this is. <laughs> I can't even believe how many pots are in there. It looks so good. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's temporary. I'm not going to be dedicating a whole kitchen cabinet to my plant pots because all of those pots have plants that belong inside of them. So we're going to go around and start putting plants back into their pots today too. So I don't really have a plan. I don't really know what's coming, but... There's a never ending list of things that I need to do since moving. I don't have like any furniture in any of my bedrooms because um, we just didn't have that much stuff in my other apartment. I don't actually have a lot of places to put plants right now. So they're kind of just on the floor. And it's funny because when I moved here, I like vowed that I wouldn't have any more floor plants, but we're starting off with a lot, a lot of plants on the floor. Diffenbachia, by the way. Here's the big Diffenbachia. We made it. I think it got a little bit hot. I'm not sure if the leaves are gonna puff back out, but it's still growing. It's got a lot of new growth already popping out. So yeah, there's the Diffenbachia, it's doing well. And then this here is the Monstera that used to be next to my couch um, on the right side. So yeah, I put it up here back on the same stool that it was on in my other apartment. And it's once again, overhanging my couch a little bit so I can sit there and look up and enjoy it. By the way, do you see my, do you see my couch? My realtor bought this for us. Um, <laughs> I can't even believe how nice this is. So on my couch here, I get to sit under my Monstera still. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I feel like, I feel like plants look so good in this space, especially the big ones. I need to figure out how to decorate. I think I'm gonna end up putting like a, I don't know what you call it, a credenza or something. One of those, just like a long table or something interesting here that I can put plants on because this area gets really good light and it's sort of just like the in-between kitchen, living room space. So I feel like this is a really good place to put a whole bunch of plants. Realistically, um, 
I, I mean, the amount of money that I need to spend over this next year to buy things to put in my house to furnish it is staggering <laughs> to me when I look at the prices of furniture. So the going is definitely going to be slow on getting my place furnished. Okay, let's go get the ficus from my bathroom. Okay, so I got this ficus. This is a ficus benjamina. Um, it used to be in my like plant hallway up on the table in the back corner. I don't know if I ever showed it, but I brought it in here because yesterday I thought I discovered that it was covered in aphids. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I noticed that there were these little white, gross, wet looking spots on the back of almost every leaf. And my first thought was, to freak out that it was a pest and I immediately brought the plant over in here and tried to quarantine it. I brought it in here and was gonna try and treat it and then I remembered that I don't even have a shower curtain in here yet to turn on the shower, but thankfully they are not pests. So let's move this out into the living room where I wanted to put it. I feel like that's cute there. Um, so thankfully, these little spots are not pests. They're actually a little bit of a latex sap that ficus create. Um, ficus, the whole genus, um, they produce latex. And it's why the big ones, they're called rubber trees because you can make rubber from the latex of a ficus. And the weeping fig, the ficus benjamina plants, apparently have a little gland that they can secrete a little bit of their latex extract um, that is also something that can help attract their very specific pollinators. So ficus produce fruit and all of the fruit of a ficus is called a fig. Fig trees are also a type of ficus. Most ficus produce inedible figs and they are pollinated by fig wasps and have a very specific relationship, usually with just one species of wasp that will pollinate their figs in a very specific way. These different ficus will produce very specific different sap that attracts their very specific pollinator um, to come pollinate their figs. So this is that sap and you can remove it or you can just leave it. I've noticed on some of the leaves it's kind of like slid around so it seems like it produced a nodule and they're kind of going somewhere else. And if you have a ficus benjamina and you've ever noticed this stuff on the back of your plant, that is probably what's going on. The other thing that keyed me into realizing that I should look this up and not just do a routine pest treatment was when I realized that pretty much all of the anomalous white globules were located in the same place on each leaf, respectively, right at the base where the stem meets the lamina, which is the name of the like leaf surface proper. So the leaf, a leaf is actually the entire structure of the petiole and the lamina, but we usually say like leaf and stem in reference to the flat surface and then the little nub that attaches it to the plant that it grows on. So anyway, this little white nodule of substance was forming at the same respective spot on each leaf and it made me realize that this was probably not a pest. Insects don't really they're not that particular. If they're gonna eat the plant, usually they can kind of just eat the whole thing. So you'll see like a whole bunch of globules or whatever it is that you're looking at, you'll see clusters of them together. Um, and some leaves will have more pests than other leaves. Um, but because this was so specifically like one white dot on the back of each leaf in the same spot, it made me realize that this was not, not the kind of pest issue that I thought it was. So this plant lost a bunch of leaves um, actually before the move, I super underwatered it, like I underwatered everything, but this is not one that I'm worried about because these drop leaves and will keep coming back as long as the whole plant doesn't shrivel up and I can tell that the trunk is really healthy. So this plant is going to grow some leaves. I think there's some branches back here that probably will not repopulate with leaves. Um, but that's okay. I think this is going to turn into an interesting shape. So and this was a free trash plant from a couple of plant shop jobs ago. Okay, I wanna get this area looking at least a little bit better. I mean, it's, it's just a big mess. <laughs> 
So let's see what, what's in here. Okay, this is that tower that I had right next to my TV. It's Syndaptis pictus and a couple of different types of pothos and philodendrons. They haven't come out of this box since I put them in there. I just had it sitting over here. And then this drawer <laughs> smells like the jungle and has some very yellow things in there. So. These are all the vines that I cut up and I don't even know what's in here, um, but I wanna propagate some of it. I think I'm gonna gather all of the vine things that I wanna propagate and bring them over into the kitchen and then we can go from there. I got some stuff over here too, some pieces of this big Raphidophora that was growing by my window. Um, I ended up giving this plant to my friend um, and just took a cutting from it. I actually wasn't even planning to take some cuttings, but it was really tangled up in some stuff and it was easier to get it out by just cutting these vines off. So I've got these vines here that I can try to propagate. Okay, so I've got all of the vine things I want to propagate ready to go there. I think this video was going to go on into the nighttime. It's way later at night. It's dark now um, and I ate dinner. I had to do some work for my other job, so I did that. And now I'm gonna do my favorite thing, which is listen to my audiobooks on my headphones and do some plant stuff. So I still have to do all of these vines, which have been sitting here this whole evening. Um, so yeah, let's finally take a look at those and chop them up. to do with this. Variegated Neon Pothos, Glacier Pothos, and I think that's it. Maybe just plain Neon Pothos too. And then in here I have Scindapsis Pictus, the little leaf kind, and some green Philodendron Cardatum, and maybe also some uh, Neon or Lemon Lime Philodendron, Heartleaf Philodendron. 
By the way, so these vines look like they're in like really sad, bad shape, but I have propagated vines that look much worse than this. And I'm pretty confident that as soon as I get these in water within a few days, they will grow roots and these will all be sprouting new plants. So prepare to be amazed. Hope I'm not speaking too soon because I usually don't wait quite this long, but I'm pretty sure these will be able to make a comeback. So after you've cut these up, sometimes it's hard to tell which way is up and it doesn't really matter so much if you have a little stick and you're trying to stick it in even if there's a leaf pointing in a random direction as long as you get the node in the water where the roots are um, it should be okay but if you really want to be sure if you look at the node area usually you can see this line here and that you can see where the root is growing too the root is on this side of the line the roots usually grow on the bottom um, below the node at the base so even if there's no leaves, you can kind of see the orientation based on where the, the root is in relation to the rest of the node. And so this is the leaf scar here. And so you can see that that's sort of on the top of this little node here and the root is on the bottom of this line. And that means that the direction is this way. So the new leaf is gonna grow out of like somewhere above the root. Um, but if you stick it in upside down, with these vining plants, when the new plant grows out, it'll figure out the orientation. It doesn't really matter which way it goes, but if you do want to be sticking them in the right way, that's what you can look for. This one has absolutely no leaves, so I have no idea what kind of pothos this is. I've got this philodendron brandianum here that just absolutely fried up during my move. Um, I don't know what happened to it. I unpacked it and it's just so crunchy. I think maybe it got crushed because it looks like a lot of the vines broke up top and then I didn't unpack this for, uh, well, I didn't wait that long to unpack it. I unpacked it within a couple of days of getting here, but I thought maybe it would recover, but it's just, getting really crunchy so we should chop this up too it never really looked very good to begin with though so 
Maybe this time it'll be better. So I created so many little jars of propagations today. So this is exciting. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of these plants. I guess I have a lot of places to put them. So these are the vining plants from that tower I had set up. Um, these are the ones I shot back and the ones I just took all those propagations from. Um, and they're doing great. This is the first time I've watered them since I moved. So they've been very thirsty. I haven't watered these in over two weeks. So, oh, actually that's not true. I think I did pour a little bit of water into them right when I got here. But still, it's been like two weeks since they've gotten water, so they're doing good. We're moving through the night like we're from a different star. Flying over streets and the broken hearts. But they can even touch us, we found a different beat. Paradise is waiting and we bought the lead. So I think I'm gonna wrap things up now. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. This has been a true delight to make this video in this new space and get to talk to you and show you these new angles and yeah, to be back doing plant chores. I'm really excited to be getting back into it. I do wanna show you more of my house. I've got a lot of things, fun things coming up. But thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'm just so happy to be back here again talking to you. So yeah, I hope that your plants are bringing you joy and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.